are living in a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. to another edition of Free Association Radio. This is Robert Phoenix, and I am broadcasting to you live from Austin, Texas, deep in the heart of the night, and deep in the heart of the country. The country is in a very unusual place in space and time. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the old Hillary double tonight, and we're going to get into a few other things astrologically. Namely, the uh, upcoming autumnal equinox, uh, the shift into the sign of Libra. We'll look at the last few days here, Mercury retrograde, and some eclipse energy. We're just gonna we're gonna go over the eclipse and just kind of see where everybody is at. Um, it was not as powerful and intense for me as the solar eclipse was, which was. Um, you know, I think at that time it was right in my midheaven. So that was a pretty intense eclipse. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the eclipse. And we'll talk about how eclipses affect us and how the energy can linger on for a few weeks. That's all part of tonight's show. And we'll do some uh, live readings astrologically in the second hour. But in the first hour, I'm going to be bringing on an old friend. Uh, her name is Jolie Evans. She is a professional psychic. She uses cards like a lot of mediums do and then sort of trips the light fantastic. It's a point of departure. This is what all um, oracles and generally methods of divination do, including astrology. They lead us into spaces that are intuitive and instinctual, and we're able to perhaps garner information that slips between the cracks and and we read between the lines. And so uh, I've had a number of readings with Jolie, and she tends to be very, very accurate, I'll have to say, in terms of her personal readings. And tonight what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do something a little bit different for her um, because I'm fascinated with this Hillary thing. And you know, Jolie is not political. She wants to stay out of the politics piece of this. But there's something else going on here in terms of, uh, the doubles and the replacements. And, you know, this goes on. It's been going on for a long time, probably a long time with her, by the way. But it's been going along a long time with other people, celebrities. You know, the Beatles, there were about three or four Beatles uh, for each Beatle. Uh, there were multiple Bushes. And I'm pretty convinced there's multiple Trumps. There's a couple of Trumps out there that don't really look like Trump. They kind of look like him a little bit, but he looks more... How do I say this? Kind of Joker-esque in some ways. And he's got a better hairline. Something happened to his hair. Anyway, I'm I'm really intrigued by this whole situation, not because of the doubles, although the doubles do fascinate me, 
uh, it's because of what's being done. There's, it's almost like a Ponzi scheme, or not, not really a Ponzi scheme. You know, when you put the little, little uh, uh, three-card Monty, it's like a three-card Monty. There's three of her, and those cards get keep keep getting moved around. You know, or when you put the little, the little uh, pearl underneath the cups, and you keep moving the cups around. This is what it's like. So we're going to get into this. We're going to try to f- figure out if we can actually discern psychically what's happening uh, with Hillary and her multiples, and, and Jolie's going to attempt to do that. And then we're going to open up the lines uh, for about a half an hour, pretty much of connecting with her and doing some live readings. Now, I'm going to give out the number here. It's 347-308-8995, 347 308 You know, we're not going to do a ton of them, maybe about a handful, um, and we're going to keep them limited. It's not like you're going to get a you know major kind of psychic breakdown, but we're going to give you a taste, and, uh, and we're going to open up the line so that you can do that if you want to do that. And then after that, um, you know, we'll talk about a great offer that she has for, you know, my listeners and the free association family in terms of availing yourself of her services. And then we'll just shift into the next part of the show. So let's do this. Let's get this going and let's bring her on the air. Let's see if we can determine what's going on with Hillary on the double front. And she's already, she already knows Hillary's card and the whole nine yards. So we're kind of locked and loaded. And uh, let's see where this little magic carpet ride takes us. Hi, Jolie. Hello, Robert. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we played baseball today. My son's team played pretty well. Um, they were they came from behind at least two or three times, had a lot of heart. Can't ask for anything more in terms of that. Yeah. So we're doing good here. How are you doing? I am doing great. Uh, thank you for having me on, by the way. And, uh, yes, we do have a special offer exclusive to your listeners, and I, I think everybody will appreciate it. But, uh, again, thank you for having me on. And, no, I am not into politics. It is uh, a comedy. It's, it's Well, you know how I feel about it, actually. You've heard a few of my choice words. But uh, you kind of have piqued my curiosity about this now. So yeah. I'm shuffling. You have, you have, because I have to tell you, since you've been talking, I have been shuffling the cards, and a couple have popped out, and you know oh. I always like to stop and, and, uh, uh, and tell you what this is, okay? And one of them was the five of spades, which is the casket, okay? And Ooh. so you better be careful with these lookalikes, because what if one of them drops dead? <laughs> well, okay, so here's my theory. My theory is that Hillary is dead, and that oh. we're yeah that we're dealing with doubles. And I had actually predicted this um, about about a month ago, and I was on a Randy Morgan show about two. Uh, it was I think it was it was last Saturday night when all this you know it was on the tenth of September, and I said she's gonna go she's gonna go into a hospital and we're never gonna see her again. And I don't think I don't think we're going to see that version of Hillary again. So go. So this is really interesting. What was that card, Jolie? It's the Five of Spades, and this is the Gypsy Witch deck. It's um, it's the casket, and the it casket. got jumped out of the deck when you mentioned her multiples. I was like, oh, she better watch out because she one of them may be making an appearance and drop dead or something. So. Um, yeah, I do feel negativity around her, around having these multiple people presenting themselves as her. And, you know, I really do think that it's possible that you might be on to something with this. So we you didn't stage this, by the way. We did not come up with the casket. There's no collusion here. The casket just, oh, yeah. just kind of flew out of there, right? Right. You know, as whenever I read your cards and... You know, somebody might fly out of the deck, a face card, or like in this example, the five of spades. Uh, but oh, I feel like, really, you know, it's really throwing cool. itself at me and saying, look at me. I have something to say to you. And what that's I'm getting from it is that you should be careful. Yeah. And okay. Well, what, was, you know, this is, what was the other card was, that flew out? It was uh, 
this is another thing. The two of hearts is a generic man card. And so you were mentioning the doubles Donald Trump has. He might end up having some trouble getting caught, you know. One of them might be getting caught in some manner. Um, and uh, there could be some kind of scandal with that. But I do believe Trump's going to jump right on the double thing. Ooh, okay, that'll be interesting. He hasn't done it yet. He's jumped on just about everything else. I've been waiting for him to but, pounce on it. That's a little weird, yeah. right? I mean, the double thing's a little weird. I think it's, that it push, he it push, it pushes the envelope a little bit. What's that? I think he he likes to mock her, and I feel like psychically I'm getting, I feel like he is going to take some slams at her, even about uh, if there are multiples that they should change their wardrobe because she's, you know, drab in her attire, and he's such an egotist. Um, but he, and he'll say something, the commentary about Bill, poor Bill, <laughs> or maybe Bill is doing better because the multiples aren't actually Hillary. But I think that he... He could um, end up making some, you know, and that's really such a horrible attitude for anybody who's going to run to be president, you know, the leader of our country. I think it's really just a joke, all this stuff, really, really. And I really yeah, love well, with, with Hillary with Benghazi, you know. I feel like she yeah. has a lot of responsibility with that, that she did not, uh, you know, she didn't stand up for it for what she did, her responsibility. So, But anyway, I am shuffling here, and I want you to tell me when to stop, and I'll throw some cards about this. Okay, okay. Let, me, let me feel this out. Okay. Stop. Okay. All right, I have the two diamonds in the center, and that's representing Hillary, actually. And this is a reading for you about her. Right, the first card is the four of clubs. It's also the key. So this is a very interesting. And then you have the four of spades, which is the eye, seeing, your suspicions, having some, having legs, basically. So there is something here to what you're talking about. Oh, and then you have the two of, I mean, the ace of diamonds, the birds chattering. Very strong communication card. Also, this could mean... Uh, some dire consequences that 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 she could end up in, encountering, or one of her lookalikes. Below that, you have another ace, the ace of hearts, and it's right side up. This is a funny card. It's the ace of hearts. It does represent family unity and all of that. When it's upside down, when it's right side up, like it is right here, it's distrust. It's conniving. Oh. It's behind the scenes. It's cloak and oh. dagger. It's not Ooh, a very pleasant card, actually. Okay? Wow. Then you have the five of clubs, which is the clover. And this is telling me that it's going to be a very short period of time between now and when some uh, shift hits the fan with, this, uh, with your um, thesis, with your theory. And right. then you have, you have the two of clubs, the railroad tracks, the king of clubs, which is also the bear, and the ten of hearts. I like to call this card the wedding bouquet. So oh. um, I feel like investigative, an, a male investigative reporter is going to really be daunting. I mean, this for, he's going to be like all over this, all right? Um, I feel like he might have some kind of, it could even be somebody like Bill Riley paying his lackeys to go up there and, you know, spy and get as much information and proof as possible. But a definite, I feel like a male journalist or talking head or somebody of that kind of notoriety like Bill, Bill O'Reilly or something like that. Uh, or who's the other one I really like? Bill Maybe Maher. it's Alex Jones. Maybe it's Alex Jones. It could be. It could be. Um, you could be right on that, too. Okay, so on the outside, we have the – that's the cards I go – I already surrounded the card in the middle with the cards I just mentioned. Now I go right. out and I start in the, north, the Pacific Northwest position. I like to call it Vancouver and, and go on the outside and go all around. All right, we have the Eight of Hearts. And this is a card that it's flattery. It can represent deceptiveness, playfulness, acting, um, 
but it also, and it's the two cats, the big cat with the little cat, and they're looking right at each other, and there's a little ball there, like they're playing with the ball of yarn, and this is, this is very interesting, because in a way, it's a harmless, it can be a somewhat harmless card, but now it's next to the Six of Diamonds, which is the lion digging its claws into the ground. And uh -huh. this is shocking news. Shocking, shocking, shocking news. So, oh, and then the snake. <laughs> uh, the kind of transition also, it's transition and change. Um, but it is a snake, you know. What do snakes do? They shed their skin. Um you know, this it can be representative of something happening during a, a time of travel with one of these multiples, one of these doubles. Right. I want to say, my guides keep telling me it's not doubles, it's multiples. Yeah, so, there's at least three. There's at least three. I, I believe think. that's true. I believe that's true. I believe that's true. All right, yeah. below that we have the, uh, and now this is interesting because you have the six of spades, and it's the mouse. But when it's in an outside position like it is right now, it can represent loss by theft or like, you know, feeling somewhat violated because um, something has been taken or wrecked, you know. And that could be her deceptiveness coming to the surface that something has happened or proving right. that, that she's had these other women pretending to be her you know, I think that's really going to come back and bite her right. You know, well, this right would be there. shocking. I mean, if it really came out that mm -hmm. she had multiples and they were involved in the uh, process, and it yes, really came it, out, it would it would blow this game wide open. So well, I, I mean, frankly, afraid. frankly, I I don't I'd be really surprised if it did happen. But it sounds to me like kind of how these cards are lining up. I mean. Does it feel like that, that this is kind of supporting this in some way? What do you think? I want to say that I feel that there is a male that has a lot of uh, connections, and maybe even Trump is behind having the king of clubs, which is I would not take as Donald Trump. This is someone uh, Caucasian, fair skin, can, brown hair, uh, can be any shade of brown from like medium brown to dark brown, blue or mm -hmm. hazel, brown eyes possibly. And uh, I want to say I feel like this is someone in their mid-30s to early 40s at the most. And okay. uh, I feel like uh, there could be big money behind their motivation to uncover what they can. And also, you know, Trump's getting ready to pull out all the stops and play as dirty as he does in business. So, you know, this is not um, a fair fight, and nor will it ever be. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of deceptiveness, and some of it's going to come to the surface. And I think that, the, that I feel that something could end. How do we know that the person who slipped and fell, or tripped rather, wasn't one of these multiples? Right. You know, I That's feel, possible. I don't but, but, feel from what I'm getting here that that could have actually been one. <laughs> you know, and that really that, that 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 version of Hillary did not look good though. She she did not look good. I mean, as she you know, because they caught a picture of her as she was standing in the crowd, and uh -huh. she uh you know had, was gaunt and, but she also had that kind of the fleshy you know kind of under. Un under chin that Hillary has. And what was very interesting is that, that, you know, the sunglasses were being employed. So we couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, we couldn't get a look at the eyes and Hillary has very blue eyes. And one of the, uh, one of the doubles apparently has kind of these hazily kind of eyes, which is, which is quite interesting. Yeah. You know, I actually know someone that I used to work with. Um, who is, uh, at one point, he was in the French Foreign Legion and such, and he um, it worked in her detail. He owns his own private security firm, and he had been uh, involved in protecting her, like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Uh, but uh, I should call him and ask him about this. <laughs> but uh, I do think that, that something is going to happen. Somehow she's going to be... Uh, call to the carpet, or there's going to be a whole uh, can of worms. I do feel like it is going to open up. 
Um, I, you know, there's something I, I, the thing that holds me back with this political crap too is it really isn't our choice. The people who choose the president are the electoral college. It's not me and you. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. It's not us. Right. You know, it's right. a big fuck. Excuse me. It's a big game to these yep. people, and they play yep. with us. We are the pawns. So you know, I'm not going to get into it, but. That's how I feel about that. But yeah. looking at this, I do feel a male is going to have in some way opportunity to uncover information. And there's somebody behind him with big money, and he he's. Uh, um, but I and and I do feel a connection with uh, some political uh, journalist getting this and breaking the story. So I do think. Well, something I I, th- I I think the. Uh... That that coffin popping out, the five of spades I, popping out at the beginning. That was very I interesting. Know. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, well you know, I go ahead. Do you have any more cards? Do you have any more cards around this, or or, or, or did you have you pulled Let's them all? Let's move on to the. Well, did you want to ask me anything else? Because I do have more cards to throw. Well, do it. Let's see what else comes up. Okay. All right, we have the two of hearts, which is what I like to call generic man card. And, uh, and you know, it's a man in a tux. These cards are from the mid-1800s. So, okay. um, yeah. So this guy, he has – I actually, it kind of reminds me, I feel like this is Trump possibly. What were you going to say, Robert? I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought okay. I heard you take it. All right, uh, and next to that is the fish, the four of hearts. Now, this is a very strong financial card, and it's a card that represents what we invest in, and it can represent big money. And then you have the moon, the five of hearts, which is exposure of secrets, okay? So, again, we come back to a male having being behind the expose, all right? And they're going to have some kind of... I keep getting the story has legs, and if anybody knows, you know, I guess that term that means it's a story that's true. It can, it's provable. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Now below the the five of hearts, the moon, we have the jack of diamonds. Now I love this card. It is. It's like Donald Trump Jr. in a way. You know, the prince. Oh, okay. Donald Trump Jr. Maybe maybe he's. Uh, maybe he might be behind, behind it. Behind he could it. be the one. He could be the one behind it. I'm sure Donald wants to stay uh, out of that, and but he could be a fat. He factors in. He factors in. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the younger Trump has something to do with it. The next card is the two of spades, and I. This card is the star, and it can be the star of success, but it also can be the star of law enforcement or covert, black ops, that sort of thing, okay? Right. But maybe we're going to have like a modern-day Watergate on this or something. But um, information is going to leak out, and I think there will be a tremendous amount of conspiracy theories that actually have uh, elements that are really provable. That look, it looks like a duck, looks like a duck, talks like a and, and you are not a conspiracy theorist. I know you. I am not. Really I am not. I, it is not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm a convert now. I'm, maybe I have to. I mean, I have to own what I've been doing here today. <laughs> so, but um, I will tell you, I do. And the, oh, the next card, the book. And the book again. Here we come to information that is factual that can be supported by documents, possibly whether it be photographic. Um, uh, eavesdropping in some manner or um, any kind of surveillance or just uh, paperwork, okay? And then you have the Six of Hearts, which is a beautiful card. It's the house. Well, maybe we're talking about the White House here. And it could be. It could, this could be in relationship to uh, the house. What I'm looking at here right now is telling me that I do believe Donald Trump will stop at nothing, not his children, to get the White House. So they uh-huh. it's like, you know, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And this guy's getting ready to, you know, he's locked and loaded. So I wouldn't be surprised if his son, though, is the one, or even his daughter's husband. 
You know. Yeah, I I'm thinking it's probably the son. I think it's probably Donald Jr. or Eric, one of those two. Okay, well, it's a male. It's definitely yeah. a male. And he's younger. So okay. Okay, well, this here is we interesting. go. Keep yeah, going. It is. We have on the outside in the Vancouver position, we have the casket again, all right? And now next to it, this is this is funny, too. We have the, the human heart. It is a card that means great joy when you're, but when it's next to the casket, it can represent a heart attack. Oh, wow. Or some heart attack or some sort of coronary uh, type of issue, okay? Right. Cardiovascular, all right? Uh-huh. Then... We have the um, Seven of Spades. This is a very interesting card. Yeah, it is the divorce clouds. One half of it is white clouds, which represent domestic happiness. The other side, dark clouds, which is divorce. Now, the white clouds also represent transition and leaving this painful world <laughs> and transitioning into the oneness of the creator of the universe. So, you know, it's funny. You have that transition card, the heart attack, or the cardiovascular card, and the casket. So mm. you, met, I do feel like there could be some sort of, and I would not say that uh, it's just her. Maybe there's even some cardiovascular issues that Trump has to deal with. And this is another thing I wanted to mention. You know, just the fact of the how you have to be hard and rugged to handle the campaign trail. Yeah. I mean, you're constantly on the go. It's, you're working constantly, and you're probably losing a tremendous amount of sleep. And look at her age and everything, and it's a hell of a lot of work. So I just, I don't know. I agree with you. I think you've sold me from looking at these cards. And you know, as a rule, I told you I, I wasn't going to look at your commentary about this. Um, right. Because I like to go in cold. But, uh, indeed, I think something could be going on here. Oh, this is interesting. Below the card that could mean spiritual transition, you have the nine of spades, which is the card. What did I say? I just said you have to be rugged to be on the campaign trail. This card actually says on it, it denotes rugged health. (laughs) Oh, you can look it up online. You can look it up online, the gypsy witch deck, nine of spades. It also says that it's beauty. It represents beauty. And because it is the nine of spades, I sometimes take it as a pregnancy card, depending on the situation. You know, it has many different meanings. It can also, it's the beautiful rose of romance and love, but watch out for its thorns because they're there, and they'll hurt you. Okay. All right, so below that, uh, we have the card of facing one's mortality. It's also the card of family. It's the seven of clubs it's the lilies all right and lilies were diagonally this is in what i call my outward miami position if we were to go completely northwest to the vancouver you have the lilies here then you have the star which can be law enforcement or covert interest uh you have her the generic man card and the casket so a man will uncover some of this stuff and you know what Maybe um, even something that one of her family members says or it could be um, taken literally or misconstrued, but really it's truthful. I don't know. Uh, I'm wondering if there's some kind of – there's something with the family, Um, family members. Um, And if it's not a family member, it could be somebody who's close to her or close to the situation. And they feel ultimately very betrayed, and they're selling out. So, huh. Interesting. Some, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Interesting stuff. Well, so did, uh, did you want to ask me anything about what we've covered with this so far? No, I think it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I, I think that there's some – I mean, it's, it feels to me like there's enough information here that one might be able to make a case that not only are there multiples, but it is it is a story that's evolving. Am I right? Yes, it is an evolve. And you know, it's, it's I feel that people are going to notice this and really take notice. It's something that's going to permeate the internet, and it will catch on with the news. 
And so there will be journalists that it's going to turn a few heads. And people are going to want the story. So somebody's going to really be digging and digging deep. And they're not afraid to play dirty. And I don't feel them having a problem with acquiring the information that they're seeking. And well, they need is a I do feel that they're – pardon me? All they need is a fingerprint. Yeah, that. And maybe even a video surveillance of them together, <laughs> you know, in groups or whatever, uh, taking a course in how to walk, how to talk, oh, God forbid, how to dress. Uh, but, you know, I just don't understand that any woman who's running for president – uh, was Geraldine Ferraro, she had sh- she was a sharp dresser. I mean, if you're going to run the country, I don't think that you should be. What is it, a leisure suit? Well, or she's, I mean, she wears those suits because she has to hide things underneath them. I mean, she's yeah, got. She's wa- uh, go to the gym. <laughs> no. Well, no, then, she. I mean, apparently. Her. What's that? No, I, no, she's she's apparently been hiding a catheter under one of them, um, oh. or one of them. Yeah, you, yeah, they've actually shown like the outline of stuff. I mean, it's just, uh, but again, that's not that's your just, that's not your world. That's that's more of my world. Not hey, just what? that, not just okay. that. It hides a multitude of sins. So you're going to want some type of clothing like that, so that multiples will not be detected. You know, that's for correct. different body features or whatever. That so is correct. So you you can, you can hide different body types beneath exactly. these. Exactly. Um, these strange and mostly frumpy designer pantsuits, which cost about $3,000 a piece. Um, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we transition out of Hillary? Cause we got a bunch of people yeah. waiting online to, to actually avail themselves of your service. You want to do that? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So here are the ground rules. Um, let's work with one question with Jolie and um, let's try to keep it, you know, kind of, we're going to move it along and try to keep these like under 10 minutes if we can, uh, cause there's quite a few people. And, um, why don't we go to, to the five, four Oh line? Uh, who, I'm not sure who this is. Let's find out. Hi there. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. Yes. Hello, Robert. Yeah, uh, I thought it was you, Eric. How's it going? Doing well. I uh, just I had my birthday on Thursday. Yeah, man, I saw that. I wish you a happy birthday on Facebook. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it's been 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 a good week, and uh, appreciate that very much. Um, You're welcome. But the uh, hey, so did, did you want to you want to play a little bit with Jolie here? Sure, sure. I appreciate Hi, that. I am shuffling the cards, and you can tell me when to stop. And then um, so I like to throw a few cards and tell you what I see, but then you can tell me what your question is. I like to see if I can try to answer it before you ask. Okay, you can stop now. Okay. First card drawn. Okay, that star, the star of success. Okay, then uh, queen of clubs, which is also the champagne. The king of clubs. And um, the jack of – okay, is this a relationship question by any chance? Actually, I was, gonna, I was going to just ask about my professional um, – you know, oh, okay. I think I professionally. Oh, okay, okay, let me go on that. Because the reason I asked is because the next card I got inside Miami position is the divorce clouds towards you. And so sure. – but you're going to overcome difficulties and obstacles. So if this is, the, you know, the relationship with your work, your profession, your career, what you love to do, I feel like there's more that you want to do. Um, and I think that if there are any struggles that you're experiencing right now, that you have to hang in there because you have beautifully placed the eight of spades upside down, which is the mountains that are upside down. So that's overcoming difficulties and obstacles. But I get the feeling that there's more out there for you and that you want more, whether it be within the confines of the job and profession you have now. But I almost I really do get a feeling like there's something else that you want to do or you should be doing. So oh, Okay. And you know what, this could end up being like something on the side. Something that you enjoy that's a that becomes a passion that is uh that you can make money from. All right. Okay. Uh, it does show the possibility of advancement or raise or promotion or reassessing what's going on. 
in the spring. But, you know, uh, I almost wonder, is it, is, I, are you looking for a different job now? Well, right now I'm in a contract period and a possible contract to hire opportunity. But, um, yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. sure if that will be what I'll ultimately stay with or not. Okay, well, what you need to do is hang in there because if this doesn't work out, it wasn't supposed to. But if it does, I mean, you have to be a little cautious because we're in the retrograde till the end of the month. Then you have to deal with the shadow for, I'd like to say, a good week before the aspect uh, clears. And so any kind of contracts that you sign now will change. So you have to be, well, I'm probably singing to the choir of your friend of Roberts. I'm sure you know all about Mercury retrograde. Mm-hmm. Um, but be cautious with that. But don't be afraid of it because, you know, everybody thinks it's such a horrible thing. Mercury retrograde is a, it has wonderful things about it. It's a great time to get a contract that can change that benefits you, you know. So um, if, if I feel like work is coming up for you. I do feel like there is more than one job. Maybe it's more than one contract job will come forward. So even if there's a delay with this one, don't uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. They could come back and give it to you, but there might be a delay because of the retrograde. Uh, But I do see an increase with work. So you are going to have at least two jobs coming up. Okay. But I keep getting that you're supposed to hang in there. And another thing is uh, travel. So you have an opportunity to travel. I feel like it could be more of a road trip. So I'm not sure if, if you are flying somewhere, you're definitely renting a car. But I almost feel like you're, you're driving. So you might be hitting the road. Possibly this is around the holidays. But I do feel like um, I feel in sense warmer weather. I feel like you're on the highway listening to some good tunes. <laughs> and you're just, you know, making tracks and getting out of town. So... Um, and I feel a sense of spontaneity, almost as if it's an invitation that's unexpected from friends to come and visit, and you're going to go for it. And it could mm-hmm. even be to come because uh, someone canceled out and they have an extra ticket or come and stay at the cabin, you know, well, before we close it up, something like this. But I feel like your uh, travel opportunities are going to come forward. Did you have another question that you wanted to ask me? Well, uh, since you you asked me whether you thought I was wondering, uh, going to be asking about relationships, was there something about relationships that you uh, that you got that you wanted to share with me? Yes, yes. Um, you know, first of all, you have cards here that show exposure of secrets. Um, I think that if there is some obstacles or cloudiness or you know, maybe if you're, you two have been irritating each other, because I do feel another, per, you know, uh, your significant other around you, um, you have to hang in there. And good relationships are worth working out. Uh, I do feel like maybe there could be a little bit of anxiety and uh, uh, bickering maybe or arguments, you know, nothing really serious. But I think both of you want the other one to – to show more attention, okay? So, let me, and maybe let me ask you a question. Jo- Julie, let me ask well, you a question. If somebody's single, right, and some of these okay. cards come up, and... Um, oh, that if, means someone's coming soon, but she's going to be a handful. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you don't ever know, because this is showing me somebody who... And, oh, I will say this then, because you have the beautiful color of the moon, which is woman. And the woman, whoever she is, and I think she could be... She's either going to be the queen of clubs or the queen of diamonds. And actually, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you there can be two different women that you meet. One has children, two kids from a previous relationship, and she's divorced. And I think you're going to enjoy this girl, but she's not your forever girl. I think the queen of clubs is because she's right above your head and you have the shepherd with a flock right above her, overcoming obstacles and disappointments below you. And then the safe with the door open to, this is a girl who likes to hit the road. She probably even has a very nice ride when you meet her. If you are in a motorcycle, she probably owns one. Um, but I want you to keep your eyes open for the brunette 
the, the strawberry blonde or sandy blonde, wet sand blonde hair, she's very nice. She has two kids. Uh, I feel like there's a tremendous sexual attraction between you. And she's someone who's looking to get married. You don't want to jump into anything right away. And um, you're not sure if you want the responsibility at this point in your life of falling in love with a woman who has kids. I'm getting that. I'm just being honest. Now, this other gal, she is, I feel like you're attracted to her family ties, very tight with her family. And you have a lot of respect for the males, her brother, her father, that you meet, and they're very good people. And it's not, she, she, um, she does very well. She adds to your life, okay? But she's um, colorful, uh, maybe a, a rowdy little Sagittarian, very spunky. And uh, you like that, though. You want that, I think. <laughs> so I would say go and accept any invitations to go. Expect, I, I it shows alcohol here, so go to the parties. Go to the bar. You know, she might be there with her friends, and you strike up a conversation. But um, you are going to meet both of these women when you are out socially, possibly in a place that serves alcohol. Well, how does that all sound, Eric? Sounds very Well, I have to go out and have a few and meet the girl of your dreams. Yeah, you should. Yeah. And I would say that you're, you're, you could meet the first one, could be at the end of October, beginning of November. Um, the brunette, possibly any time from right before Christmas through New Year's. So, And that's even uh, something that you're going to feel, this is a sign because the New Year is coming and this new love, and I'm feeling really good about this girl. And I know she's crazy, but I think I love her for that anyway. And... <laughs> But you can call oh, me and get a reading if you want, okay? After you meet her. Okay. Well, all, all right, Eric. I appreciate it. Thank I'm you, Eric. You back, I'm going to put you back on hold. Let's take another call here. Thanks, Eric. He, he, that was quite a quite a reading there for the birthday boy. Well, hey, you're it's on his birthday. Your, hello, you're on here with Jolie. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Did you did you want to speak with Jolie? Yes, yes, I would love to. All right. All right, what's your name? My name is Suze Pratt. Oh, hi, Suze. How are you? How are you doing, Robert? I'm good, good. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the party. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be You're here. You're welcome. Yeah, do you, uh, do you have a specific thing you want to talk with Jolie about? Oh, sure I do. This online phenomena for the last 27 months in my mission, absolutely. Okay. Well, how are you doing? I'm Hi, ask you. Hi, it's nice to Hi. meet you, Suze. Nice to meet you. I am shuffling the cards. You can All tell right. me when to stop. Okay. You can go ahead and stop. Okay. First card. Oh, I love this card. It's the highest money card in the deck, the Ten of Diamonds. Excellent. So the next card, oh, my gosh. You better go to Las Vegas because you have jackpot right above your head. The Jack of Diamonds. Yeah, the Jack of Diamonds is the rider on the horse, the prince, the rider on the horse. And the Jack of Diamonds is a card that brings good news, very, very good news. But it's also the card that represents jackpot winning money. Um, it's a really great card if you're going to Vegas or you uh, want to take a risk that involves finances. And to have the very first card being the highest money card in the deck next to it, oh my gosh. And then the card next after it is the upside down lion. Now, as you might have heard earlier, the lion right side up is shocking bad news. Well, when the lion's upside down, it's shocking good news. So. Financial opportunities, I think, are going to come, uh, are going to abound. So somehow extra money is coming in or money that people, someone may have owed you or some, you did a good turn and they're benefiting you somehow financially. But money coming. And I feel like it's coming right at a good time, too. So maybe a little bit of it is in one hand and out the other. But money is coming to where you are going to put some money away. And were you thinking about changing your automobile or maybe even getting a pickup or something? Well, we just got a Jeep about four months ago. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The okay. apocalypse vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, um, what question did you have for me? Well, okay, Jolie. So I was never, ever interested in being online. And 27 months ago, I'm going to say I was recruited to come forward and share my story. And so everything I've learned has been more through telepathy and for purpose and mission. So that is my my main um, question, you know, that I just like to mm-hmm. hear what you vibed on that. Okay, what's your birthday, Suze? February 25th. February. Okay, Pisces. 25th, 1964. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Pisces, Sun, you know, a lot of Neptunian energy, very good. See, that's the thing. You have a natural affinity and ability to see beneath the surface on so many things and on many levels. Uh, I feel like you are intuitive to someone's health. Um, yes. You can, so it's all the way around. It's all encompassing. And I do, and it shows here with the first card being the highest money card. And then the um, good news to you is people, and I think that, are you getting money for your readings? Are you doing readings? No, ma'am. Um, what You're I'm really good. doing, what I'm really doing is transitioning a 30-year small business I I'm the sole proprietor of the Hair Emporium, and I'm here in Ferguson where I was targeted and lost my walls, but they were confining me, so now I'm taking my salon global online, and I've been speaking a lot on YouTube and stuff, so it's it's a new world for me. Oh, okay. Well, somehow um, money is going to come and evolve from some of these opportunities, because of the fact that you have, well, you have those two cards are the first two drawn. And very interestingly enough, I went ahead and threw some more. Above the jack, which is kitty corner uh, northeast of the ten of diamonds, is the ten of clubs. In this deck, whenever you have more than one ten near each other or next to each other, it means it's all about money. Money coming wow. to wow. you. And this particular ten of clubs represents money through business. So I think that you're going to start out with maybe people, and you don't have to charge that much, but I think that it's very important for an exchange of energy to happen. You know, you have to have some kind of a manifestation of an exchange once you're providing these services. You know, you're bringing your guides, they're bringing theirs to the table, and you're the interpreter. You are as I am. We are the telephone wire. It's not us. It comes through us. And so... I feel like you're starting out, and, you know, it took my mother, oh my, she did it all my all, all of her life. It, it, this runs in my family, great-grandmother, uh-huh. I remember her doing. But my mother, um, I remember I was well in my 30s before I got her to charge people, you know, and she would have people at the house, and they would spend the day and have dinner and everything. But, um, oh, yes, I'd be, I'd be adopting these people. Uh, but, right. you know, start out with something's comfortable for you. But it's really important that there's an exchange of energy. And also and, you're showing respect to your guides, you know. They want yeah. you to yeah. be happy. And this is something that you need to do. And it should be a business with you. So maybe you want to start out with 20 or $25 for a half hour or whatever that you're comfortable with. And you work your way up. But I think that you, it's, um, you should be practicing and ask. You're, it's going to get out. The word yeah. is already yeah. out. And I also right. feel that people right. do talk about you because you bring up psychic stuff. You don't, they don't have to ask for a reading. You just say it anyway. I've been and, doing it my whole life, yes. Yes, yes. exactly. Well, come on, sister. Right, uh, exactly. Uh, sister, come on, let's go. So, indeed, this is something that you might want to consider looking into the metaphysical stores and uh, put your hat in the ring to do psychic readings during their psychic fairs. Usually they'll want 20, uh, 35%, I think, used to be. Right. I used to go to those years ago. Maybe they still do that. I don't know. But that might be something that you want to try because it gets your name out there even more, and you'll love the feel of it as you're becoming more of a, you're getting paid for your shingle finally, 
you know. I'd, I'd, I'd love to confirm spirit for you and for the listeners and just share a story with you. Please when do. I was young, I was 20 years old. I ran with a St. Louis uh, celebrity psychic. Her name was Mama Lil. And back then she told me that I would be her legacy, and I went running terrified because I just wanted to be normal. You know, so. This is our normal, honey. I know, but coming from the background I did and living a fear-based life, it was tough at that time. But I will say this. I'm creating a new format, and I've just started my own production and broadcasting. Um, I was with a international crew that was found to not be true, and the biggest thing that people need to understand these days is everybody's masks are coming off. They know who we all are, and I've been speaking about that. So what I want to work on, Jolie, is an equal exchange system where even if it's not money, we have an, a fair equal exchange for different right. healing services and, and different good works. So you're absolutely yes. right. I Thank totally you. support that, too. I totally Thank am with you, you Dad. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you, Sue. Oh, namaste, my friend. I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Oh, my, all my pleasure. All my pleasure. All right, and send my love to Robert again. Thank you, Suze. Nice hearing your voice. Oh, always, always nice to hear yours, too. You guys have a great night, and thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Let's take, a, let's take, let's take another call, and uh, we got two more, Jolie, so let's try to keep it at a, at a lively pace here. This is from okay. uh looks like the internet, like a Skype caller. Let's see let's see who this might be. Hello there, thanks for calling in. Hello? You're on the air with Jolie. Hello? Sometimes Hello. Hey Robert, it's me. Who's you? Ah, this is Robert. Can you hear Robert. me? Robert. Hello, Robert. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. So, uh, Julie, this is a, <laughs> this is another card reader, uh, Robert B. Robert Bonamo, who's been on the show a, num- a couple mm-hmm. of times, and we've gotten into some international stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. so he he's pretty he's pretty uh, sophisticated with the tarot. And so, Robert, you want you want a little reading here, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Julie, how you doing? Great to hear. Oh, I'm you. doing great, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks anyway, a lot. Anyway, what is really your birthday? You. What's your birthday? Let's start with that. Ah, June 7. I'm a Gemini. Oh, yes, you are a sunny Gemini. And what uh, – <laughs> okay, let me shuffle, and you can tell me when to stop shuffling. Sure. Um, now. Okay. You can stop now. All right, first card. Beautiful. The ace of diamonds upside down, those birds chattering away. You know, this is a wonderful communication card. And you really have a very clear, oh, I love it. You have the eye, the all-seeing eye, right above your head. So your third eye is like oh, like laser beams, okay? <laughs> very good. A lot of psychic wow. ability here. I'm saying that, uh, oh, and then we have another communication card, the lightning bolt. Uh, the six of clubs. I'm wondering if you're, are you thinking about having classes or doing some internet or online teaching or something like that, showing your particular method of reading? And also I feel like you have a lot of artistic creativity. Maybe you're even visualizing a new deck that you want to create. Wow, that, that's a fabulous reading. Can I tell you the question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot to ask. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> – but you you already answered it. That was fabulous. I'm actually I and Robert, we've talked about this. I'm thinking of making a film. I'm actually making a film now about the tarot. And I just wanted to get your feedback because I've I've been having a lot of a lot of stuff's been coming up with this film. Personally, psychologically, spiritually. It's yeah. like a real process. So you yes. really nailed it. 
<laughs> but I'm telling you, this is a phenomenal <laughs> film. Oh my gosh! I want a, I want a DVD, and I want you to sign it. Uh, this is great <laughs> because you have you have that the vision right above your head, and all this communication. You're going to reach many people with this. It's going to be very highly informative. And I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you that I feel it leads to other documentary type style work or film work, you're going to even get deeper into it. So this could be um, uh, one, the first one, but uh, there's definitely going to be a sequel or two or three. So keep that in mind. And you know, you're really spreading the word. You're opening up people. You're helping them open up their chakras, whether they know it or not. You know, you're doing so much spiritual work. You're really an initiator. And that's what you're here for. And you are doing a great job. But I love this. I think it's going to be a huge success. Um, there is even opportunity for money. I don't know. Maybe it'll be at Sundance or something. So, you know, um, this is uh, life-changing and pivotal for you. And people will definitely know who you are. And we have to swap private readings one day, my dear. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. My pleasure. Uh, Robert oh, yeah. can switch our information, and we can do that. Um, uh, I'd love to. Oh, that's wonderful. I would love would to. Uh, now, let me ask you this. Were you talking about going to some, uh, uh, like, a spiritual vortex or something, or Sedona or Grand Canyon or something like this? And if it is, I feel like you would be wanting to visit the places where the cave dwellings and such or the ancient ruins with Indians, and um, somehow I, maybe you're going to be working with somebody Native American and they're going to open up your nose to it. But uh, did you plan on traveling, like to Arizona or Colorado or Grand Canyon states or anything like that? I would, that's like my dream is to really, it's interesting you said there are more films with this because actually I have mm -hmm. thought of a trilogy. So if it worked, I'm thinking of two more. And, yes. Yeah, I would love to travel with the film. I would love to you travel. Know what? You know, you need to could, see it. You see it in your head, visualize it, and there's no choice. It's going to happen. You have to believe it. You have to know it. You already know it. It's it was in your brain, in your head, long before you begin to dictate the story and create it. You know, and that's why that file. You have so much information that you can pull out and that you can bring and uh, display and share with the world in three separate sequels. So indeed, I support that totally. I feel that's the path that you are on. It's very important for you to see it, feel it, s smoke it. <laughs> I mean, just know it, feel it, <laughs> live it. And don't deny yourself that it's going on. It's happening, it's happening right now before you're... You, I didn't even know what your question was, and you got your answer from the universe, okay? So what's going on, buddy? <laughs> oh, that was a great reading. That was a yeah. great reading. That was yeah. fabulous. Thanks so much. That's really what I, what I needed to hear, actually. Yes. Um, so and it is a lot so of work, and there's a lot of distractions. But you know what? You're going to do it. You know you can. It's already done in your head. You're just going through the motions now of putting it all together. And it is going to be a success. And I look very forward to um, watching. Great. Well, all right. Great. Thank you so much. I think yeah. we had some magic there. Hey, Robert? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fantastic. Really fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you. Oh, you are so welcome. It was all my pleasure, Robert. And I look forward to reading with you in the future. <laughs> Definitely. I look forward to it. Too. Have a great day, you guys. You Take too. Care. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. That's my, uh, my friend, good friend, friend of the show, all the way from Kam uh, Kamchatka. Is it Kamchatka? He's in Russia, Joel. He was calling from Russia. Oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. <laughs> that no. is so wild. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. He's, he's a – Robert and I connect on Skype pretty frequently. Let's take one more caller. This is the last call to the top of the hour, and then uh, we're going to talk to Jolie about her special offer, and then we're going to uh, transition off and do a little bit of astrology after that. So this is the last call of the evening for – Jolie Evans, hi there. Welcome to the show. Who are you, and what would you like to share with Jolie or ask her? Uh, this is Philip Proffer, and um, just basically what my cards are. Hey, hey. Philip. Thank you for calling hey. in, buddy. How are you? I'm hanging. I still don't have a job, 
So Langenberg really put me, you know, just the, all the, the hope and the idealism that Langenberg was about. For me, it's just um, to come down to the Earth planet again and work yeah. on the Donald ideal. It's been tough. So being out in the world again, and um, I don't know, just uh, I just want to see what what Langenberg, Langenberg still is is in the making. You know, it, it still has like a funding going to supposedly come through, and and it's all looking good for it. You know, this is uh, really just just. A, a let, let's give, let me give let me give people some background here. Um, this uh, this must be a Mercury retrograde reunion show tonight. Philip was yeah, a guest on the show, <laughs> and and. and uh, and Philip was uh, working with a company called Langenberg out of uh, Oregon, uh, you know, uh, sourcing really amazing water uh, and a lot of really incredible stories surrounding the water. And um, Philip uh, wound up eventually separating and going in a different direction from the company. But the show that he did with us was was incredible. So now you're you're kind of out there hanging out and. Looking for something else to do. Jolie, maybe you can help him out with that. You know, it's funny because when he first started talking, I was thinking, oh, no, don't talk, don't tell me. And uh, he mentioned work. You mentioned your job, your work, your profession, you know, having to get a new job and all that. And I was thinking, I think this, I feel like you could be in something that is uh, creative, anything that is with, uh, like, publicity or shows and working in uh, the context of a PA or something like that that you might like. Um, but let me shuffle these cards, and you can tell me when to stop, okay? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Okay, you tell me when. Oh, um, yeah, just um, the publicity thing. I don't know what the sh- some shows. I don't know. I can probably. No, he, she wants she, uh, Philip. She wants you to tell her when to stop shuffling. Oh, okay. Um, she, she, if you can just say um, anything else about the uh, the card that came up. For me. Okay, let me tell you. Um, you first of all, while you were talking, the ten of spades flew out of the deck, yeah, that's, and that's that is a card. Well, that's a delay. Okay, so you're not going to get the job that you want right away. Even if you want a mix job, you're not getting it right away. There's going to be a little bit of a delay. And I think you have to stop listening to the people around you. I think that there could be some toxic or negative people with their commentary and do not absorb it. If that's their problem, they're entitled to their own opinion. Let it go in and go one ear and right out the other. But don't take it to heart, okay? And um, I know it's frustrating. But uh, it's a short delay. It's not a big delay. It's a short delay. And I feel like there could even be a female, a woman, the queen of clubs. So you might end up finding a job opportunity through a friend of yours. Okay. I like the queen of clubs card. I know I know about the love cards. Is it similar to the love cards? The love card, being oh. the queen of clubs is a Mother Mary card, they call it. Okay. Have you ever heard I- of the love cards before? Barbara knows about the love cards. I didn't know, but yeah. is this a tarot thing? It, it's a tarot, you know, it's, it goes back to ancient Egyptian and even that. Oh, well, of course, I could see that because, you know what, she is the queen of clubs and she's very lovely and she has uh, bottles of champagne or wine. I'm not sure what they are. There's four bottles there and a couple of lovely fruits. Uh, um, uh, and, you know, this is a card of happiness and joyfulness. So this yeah. is, the, I would say, you know, I'm going to say, uh, I think that you can meet somebody very nice in the job that you end up getting. I feel like uh, two things here. I'm kind of wondering if you could end up um, with a job that has, maybe you're organizing in the office some form of transportation, uh, you through f- using the phone and computer system, but I feel like not as a driver, unless like you were willing to be like a taxi for people with cancer or something, and they do pay money, uh, hospital or whatever to make the transport. But I don't think that. I feel like this could be some kind of an office type of job, and, and so I think that you should check out any kind of trucking industry. Anything in the t- transportation industry that could be limos, taxis. Oh, it could even be working in a a car dealership. Okay, uh, wherever this place is, I feel like 
you know, it might not be what you imagine for yourself, but there's a ton of characters there. And you're going to like the environment. Okay. Right. But there is a bit of a delay. I also want to say whatever job this is, take it. Because you know what? It's not forever. This is a transitional job, and there's another opportunity that's coming for you. Um, I feel like it's not until next year after June. But between now and then, I feel you end up having something else. Okay. So, you know, uh, and I feel like geographic closeness is very important to you. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be really close. Now, maybe it could even be uh, at, like, a community service center in your area or something like this, or park district, and, okay. you know, you radio to the trucks, whatever. But did you want to ask me another question? Oh, that's it. Thank you, Julie. And, and Robert, I just want to say how much I appreciate everything you do, your your newsletters, everything. It's, he's just the most amazing man I've ever met. You're awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm thank thank you, thank you, Philip. And I, I appreciate you hanging around these last few years and still paying attention to what you know what I'm talking about. And oh, I hope you can land something you know really you know solid pretty quickly. Get back on your feet and. You know, we're all we're all pulling for you. You know, we're we're all out here doing it. So you take good care, all right? Yeah. Okay, you too. Love you, bro. Bye-bye. I love you back. Well, Jolie, that was such a nice little way to to uh, end our time together tonight. What do you think? Well, I think uh, considering apparently he has some kind of health issues or something, I kept feeling like it was an office type job where he could sit down and be relaxed. There's a lot of characters, so he gets a kick out of that. There is a job that is for him that, and there's two jobs actually, but the, and maybe he gets a raise or a better job in the same company once he sets up somewhere. But it's going to be something he can do, and that's most, and that he likes. And that's what's well, important. Yeah, Philip, Philip is a very cosmic, cosmic guy and uh, pretty deep. So I hope I hope that uh, he gets something so he can keep his feet planted on terra firma. Hey, let's talk about the offer that you have for the listeners. Yes, yes, it's a very special, exclusive offer. And what it is is I well, I'll tell you, I charge. I'm very inexpensive because of the economy, and I'm here to help people. And I never stop when the timer goes off. In fact, I don't even really use a timer unless I'm doing a party. But uh, I charge $50 for a half hour, 100 for an hour. And my offer is, um, uh, is to have two, hour, two one-hour readings for 75 bucks. So you can take a half hour or an hour for yourself and break the other one up into two half hours and give them as gifts or break them all up into gifts and give four half hour readings as gifts because it is a really fun gift to give somebody. It's very unusual. It's one of a kind. And it's, and I'm here to help people, you know, I, that's what I want to do. That's my passion. And so I'm charged. making myself very affordable. Zero degrees so. Virgo 12th house. Um, how do people get a hold of you and how long does this reading, uh, this offer last for? Well, like, you know what? I was going to do it for 24 hours, but I'll do it for 48 because I love you so much and you are so cool. And how you can reach me is at uh, phone number 708-248-4664, or you can uh, contact me through my email, Jolie, J-O-L-I-E, E-V-A-N-S, at live, L-I-V-E dot com. JulieEvans.com. Read the, yeah. give out the phone number one more time. Okay, it's seven zero eight two four eight four six six four. Okay, now as far as the offer goes, this show gets converted into a YouTube file, which has a it base. This show basically has about two um, life cycles, three actually. Mm -hmm. We have the live streaming, we have the recording on Blog Talk, and then there's a YouTube version that comes out. Usually comes out around sometime Monday. I think maybe you may want to extend that out one more day just so the YouTube people can get it. Maybe 72 hours. What okay. do you think? Sure. Why not? I'll do that. It's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, right? Well, it's already Sunday, so let's go to Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, so we've got till Wednesday. You can connect with Jolie before Wednesday. This is a pretty, pretty – Rare offer, you're getting two hours, uh, two one-hour readings for $75. I'm not sure anybody is that generous and uh, brings that amount or of skill. Or crazy. 
Well, let's just let's call you generous and uh, yeah, and I am. I am. I'm service selfish. oriented. Yeah, I am very well, service oriented, and it's a pleasure and an honor to read for any of your guests and your followers. I'm very happy to. Good. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. It's been a great hour. Uh, go take care of your grandkids, and uh, I hope yeah. you get a few few people to connect with you. And thank you so much, Shirley. Oh, you're welcome, Robert. And thank you, everybody. It's been great, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. That's uh, Jolie Evans connecting with us from Hillary Clinton's old town, Chicago, the land of uh, strange politics and other things. Tell you what, let's play another song. Well, let's play a song uh, that gets us at the top of the hour. we got about 50 minutes left in the show. We come back. We get into some astrology. Uh, this is from uh, an old uh, friend. Uh, I think he might have even been on the show one time, Ari Oakland. Let's get a little uh, a little folky, a little dusty. This is uh, Anime. We'll be back in about uh, four minutes and 20 seconds. You're listening to 11th House Radio. I'm Robert Phoenix. Uh, the pregnant pause after such a great piece of music. You know, Ari's a really interesting guy. He gave up his music career or his desire to be a professional musician, and now he's in the realm of psychiatry. Uh, hence the title of the track, Anime, A Psychological Condition. Um, so here we are, 1115 in South Central Texas. You're listening to 11th House Radio. I'm Robert Phoenix, and we're going to shift into astrology here now and get into sort of the uh, after effects of the eclipse, not necessarily as potent as that solar eclipse, although there are some people, I do talk to a lot of people, try to get their pulse on what's happening with them and their lives. And um, one of the things that did come out during uh, the prelude to the eclipse was, of course, I'm kind of obsessed with this Hillary double. And we're dealing with the, the eclipse in Pisces, where things just aren't as they seem. You know, Pisces is that sign that is connected to, to some extent, prestidigitation. And, you know, I talked about this on the Friday show where it's almost like she's been involved in a, a magical act in a lot of ways, starting from 9-11 and everything that 9-11 represents, Gemini, twins, doubles, right? I mean, this is what happened, the Twin Towers. And so we have two Hillaries that emerge uh, one on uh, one goes theoretically down, and another one appears on 9/11. Fa- well, the days after 9/11, actually uh, on the 14th. So what is that? Three days after. That's a resurrection cycle. I choose the 15th. Res- it's a four-day resurrection cycle. Fascinating to say the least. So we're going to get into a little bit of the uh, the the effects of the lunar eclipse. Now, uh, eclipses last up to two weeks after, two to two to three weeks after, and um, I gave a webinar on Saturday and talked at length about uh, the lunar eclipse and where it was at that time, uh, basically just beyond uh, the uh, south node uh, in Pisces and uh, right on Chiron in Pisces. So this is actually an interesting time as it relates to uh, vulnerability, psychic vulnerability, spiritual vulnerability, and a lot of people feel quite vulnerable uh, during this weird phase that we're, we're going through. Now, we've had some interesting events that took place really on the heels of the lunar eclipse. We had a, a stabbing up in Minnesota at a mall, very bizarre. I, you, know, I, I, you know, I haven't had a lot of time to look at that event, but, but according to uh, information that's been thrown out there, the guy was shouting, Allah Akbar, and he was walking up to people and asking them if they were Muslims. Now, remember, there are two signs that deal with religion. One is Sagittarius, I mean, in, in a fairly clear way. One is Sagittarius, and the other is Pisces. Sagittarius deals with Orthodox religion, Pisces with esoteric religion. But when we get into Pisces, we're, we're kind of getting into the Abrahamic faiths or the Abrahamic religions. And, of course, the three of them are Judaism Christianity, Islam, uh, there, there are theories that all three of which were set up to be smoke screens in a lot of ways and to divert us from the truth. Now, I think there is probably some truth in the organizational part of it on the Christianity side. Um, you know, we get into, you know, Sananda, Yeshua, Emmanuel, 
and the figure that we know as Jesus and the age of Pisces. And over the course of the last uh, 24 hours, there's been some interesting things coming out around being able to profess one's faith in public. We're going through a, a phase cycle where it's becoming very uncool uh, in this country to have any kind of relationship with Christianity. Uh, and I'm not necessarily an avowed Christian, but I don't, I don't disavow Christians, and I certainly don't disavow uh, some of the tenets and the faiths or the principles that go along with it. But there, there's a lot of information that's uh, surfacing, news chatter, where obviously we're moving towards something very, very different in terms of our collective and, and global relationship with religion and the Abrahamic faiths. And in October, um, I think it's actually the, it's around the 28th or 29th of September, if I'm not mistaken, there's a big meeting taking place. Um, and it's going to be, if I'm not mistaken, in Jerusalem, where uh, representatives of a number of different faiths, well, from the three of the Abrahamic faiths, and I believe Buddhism, they're all getting together. And they're all, you know, and, and I think the Russian Orthodox is involved in this as well, because um, our good friend, um, the, the, the Pope, the Pope of Hope, who's come in to basically dismantle the Catholic Church, that's his job. Uh, Sagittarius, of course, and uh, with Neptune coming in and squaring Sagittarius, we're finding that there is a narrative that's getting more and more um, obfuscated and and more more and more fuzzy about really you know what these faiths are about, and uh, it's su it's such a fascinating time we're living in uh, because on the one hand uh, there seems to be a profession of Non-judgmentalism, tolerance, whatever you want to, you know, bring into this in terms of how we view these things on the uh, on the governmental side. Uh, Obama's hired a, quite a few Muslims, and they are in his uh, cabinet. And there is a, basically a uh, a policy where they don't want to talk about Islam as a religion of hate. I don't slam Islam. I don't slam. Uh, I don't, I, it's, I'm not an Islamophobe. And at the same time, um, there is this really slippery slope with all of the Abrahamic religions, you know, all three of them that we're all experiencing sort of in simultaneity. So, you know, when we get into the fog of obfuscation and delusion and illusion, which is a very Neptunian, Piscean uh, energy, you know, we're trying to, you know, gain some kind of footing, some kind of moral ground uh, or immoral ground, depending upon where you are in relation to these Abrahamic faiths. And I would say that over the course of the next two weeks, we're going to see more and more strange occurrences, more and more um, uh, incidents where uh, faith is denied or faith is uh, exploited. I mean, it's going to be a theme here over the course of the next few weeks. Now, hopefully, as we move into this Libra energy, which is coming up, Sun and Libra, Jupiter and Libra is already there, that we can find some balance with all of this. And the balance isn't out there. It's not in some institution. That balance is inside of you. And we have to work hard towards that balance to some degree. I mean, balance in this world is difficult to achieve. Let's just be clear about that. And if you have found some balance, if you have found a through line during these times, where you can stay connected to your spirit, stay connected and guided towards a, 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 a point in the event horizon, and your faith is unshakable, then hold on to it. And for the rest of us or you know, people that are listening, this is something we need to cultivate. It's really important, very, very important, because it is not going to get easier. Um, the, the path is going to become more obscure, and there are going to be more alternatives that are going to show up to get you to think about an alternative path. We are moving towards a global religion. Keep that in mind. We are moving towards a, go a global religion. Now, some of them would like it. Some people uh, in power would like that global religion to be Islam. Believe it or not, the numbers are there. Um, it serves as a wedge against Christianity. It's already being uh, weaponized in Europe in a big way. Um, and they're trying to do something very, very similar here in the U.S. So we had this character in, in uh, Minnesota asking people if they're Muslim. If, you, if somebody comes up to you and asks if you're Muslim, you can say you don't know, thinking about it. 
<laughs> you know, because they may have a knife. Who knows? I'm thinking about it. What what can you tell me about Islam? You know, and buy some time. And if you say no, I'm not. I, I look. I'm not saying that this that you're going to encounter a knife wielding uh, uh, assassin, uh, a, a uh, hashish, hashishin, which comes from the Muslim faith, believe it or not, Ibel and Hassan. Uh, but you may want to say, hey, you know, I'm not really sure about Islam. You know, what, tell me a little bit more about it. What happens? I've heard. I've heard that if I. I dedicate myself. There's there's a lot of virgins waiting for me on the other side. You know, what can you tell me about it? And just have kind of a, you know, I mean, Pete, you've been practicing for years with the Seventh Day Adventists and the Jehovah's Witnesses, particularly the Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to your door. Except for the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know that they're always going to be wearing a white shirt and a tie, and um, they're always going to have a really, uh, generally a pretty close haircut. So they may not announce themselves in the same kind of way. But you've been practicing all these years with the JWs. In, in dialoguing with them. So if somebody comes up to you and asks you if you're Muslim, you say, oh, you know what? Tell me more about it. I'd like to, you know, I've been, I've been uh, curious about it. I'm not, you know, I'm not really there yet, but I'd like to learn more. Uh, it might just actually save your life. Um, so we've had that. We've had these pipe bombs, which went off in New York. Just bizarre. You know, one went off. They found another one in the Chelsea district. Hello, Chelsea district. How about that? The Chelsea district is, of course, connected to one Chelsea Clinton. Although, look, it's not really planned that way, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now, what's also interesting is Trump really, you know, he's been he's been politicizing these events. So he's been playing on people's fear and their need for security. Fear, need for security. And um, that is, again, in a lot of ways, very Piscean, because in, in when we get into Pisces, there's a whole range of emotions. There's a whole range of possibilities. There's a whole potentiality of where things can go, how things can go wrong, or perhaps even some form of salvation where somebody can come in and change everything and make everything better. So we've got about two weeks here with this, uh, the after effects of this lunar eclipse and um, pretty powerful, I think, but subtle at the same time, since we're dealing with Piscean energy. Why don't we look ahead to the week ahead and see what we've got astrologically. Let's see what we got here. All right. I'm going to go home. Now, we've got the uh, autumnal equinox, and that's coming up. And that's going to happen on Friday, just as we're moving out of Mercury retrograde. How about that? Things come back into balance again. This has been a hell of a Mercury retrograde. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, we got sign of Virgo, 26 degrees, three more degrees of Virgo, and we are officially headed towards fall. This is the backstretch of the calendrical year. Uh, we are roughly uh, six months into the astrological new year. So even though our Gregorian year ends in December, we're really halfway through the astrological year, which takes place at zero Aries. And it's all based on, of course, the procession of the equinoxes and the cycles of cardinality. So we, we are getting ready to come into that half-year demarcation at zero Libra. Now, theoretically, what you have created and started at zero Aries, right, in your life, wherever you were, right around the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of March, as the energies began to shift from Pisces to Aries, whatever you were working on and planting at that time comes to fruition here in the fall at zero Libra. So keep that in mind. If some of you have been working on long cycles of time where you began something new, if a relationship started right around that time, you started a new job, or you, there was a, a phase shift in your life, Technically speaking, the fruits of that come together and present themselves on the 23rd of September, which is roughly about a week away, a little, little less than a week away on Friday. And what's really cool about the, uh, the equinox is, you know, there's that egg trick, you know, where the egg can actually stand up. You know, you can take an egg and, you know, if you, if you find the right time of day during the equinox – that the egg will actually, you can set it on its butt on the round side, and it will stand in the air. It's a, it's a fascinating phenomena. 
if you haven't tried it, I would I would suggest you give it a shot and play with it this uh, this coming Friday. And it's a symbol for a point in time where there is kind of this perfect apex of balance. Now, Libra, much to um, the uh, uh, a popular belief, Libra is not a sign that is balanced. It is a sign that, technically speaking, is always searching for balance. It's looking for something that it, it's trying to find um, the center point in a certain area of one's life, whether it's work and fulfillment or work versus fulfillment, uh, whether it's commitment in relationship versus commitment to self, whether it is family or whether it is your job, whatever those things are, a lot of the energy from a solar perspective comes up during this phase cycle in Libra. Now we've got Jupiter also there in Libra. So when we come around to uh, Sunday, when this show will once again air, um, it's going to be a very interesting time because we're going to have a Sun-Jupiter conjunction. In fact, the Sun is getting there you know, fairly quickly now. So we're going to have the Sun and the second Sun of the solar system combining energy. It can be an incredibly harmonic time. You know, there's a lot of potentiality. There's a lot of possibility when we have these two giants that are working together in, 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 as part of the cosmic order. And in the sign of Libra, what's heightened? Beauty, symmetry, mediation, harmony, all the things that are represented by the sign of Libra have grand potentiality during this phase cycle. Again, that's next, basically next weekend. So if you are, you know, reaching out, trying to connect, uh, looking to, you know, build a bridge between you and another person, build a bridge between you and an experience, you and a vocation. This is a great time. This is kind of like Christmas, to be honest with you, when you get a Sun-Jupiter conjunction. And it happens, you know, roughly once a year whenever there's a, a Sun-Jupiter cycle. Now, we went through this last year when the sun shifted into Virgo, which was right around the mid, mid part of August of last year. So when that happened, we were really dealing with this grand potentiality around healing and looking at ourselves and at our lives and being pragmatic and having the ample opportunity to get better. So that was one, that's another cycle. When we talk about astrology, we're dealing with cycles within cycles within cycles. We just came out of a square, a Saturn square Neptune cycle, which was a 37 year cycle. So if we went back 37 years ago, that was the last time we got into this Saturn Neptune square in a significant kind of way. Fascinating stuff. So when we go through the Saturn Neptune cycle, we're dealing with this whole concept again of truth. What's real? What's not real? What do we want to buy into? You know, what would we like to be real? versus what we really know that is real and true. And we've, we've been going through this now for roughly about a year, year and a half. And some of this has manifested out there in the world in terms of the system is rigged, right? This is what Trump is saying. The system is rigged. And people saw the system was rigged. I mean, it was right out in front of everybody's face when it came to Bernie Sanders and when it came to Hillary. And they had no intention of ever letting Bernie Sanders become the Democratic nomination. I'm not even sure Bernie Sanders had that intention, although he sold it really well. I mean, maybe, maybe he did. Maybe he really thought that this was his time. But what I find incredibly disingenuous is that Bernie's out there and he is still stumping for the three Hillary's. I mean, it's mind blowing. I mean, this is a guy that was completely ripped off unless, of course, he was part part of the operation, but he was completely ripped off. He might have been roughed up, and uh, his followers and the people that were really throwing down money and heart and soul uh, with, his, uh, with his run for the presidency, uh, it, it was almost as if they didn't exist on some level. You know, I mean, if I was a Bernie Sanders supporter, I, I'd be completely crestfallen, and I would have a lot of... Um, I'd be even more cynical about the system than I was before they got on board the Bernie train. And here we get into that Saturn-Neptune square again. 
You know, you, you we're dealing with the grim reality of a system, which is Saturn. And Neptune and Pi says, yeah, this could be, this could work. Now, I've heard many different things as it relates to Hillary, her health. Sanders may pop up. He may have some kind of Lazarus-like moments because I've heard that if she does not continue to run, he may actually get the ticket, which is maybe why he's playing nice. I don't know. But I've heard some other things. I've heard Biden. And we can't discount the fact that they may decide to run Hillary doubles all the way through this thing. Now, they're running a risk because the Hillary double, unless Trump is in, in on this, uh, the Hillary double probably won't be able to hold her own during the debates with Trump, who's a shark. But that's if Trump isn't in on it. Again, I keep talking about Trump in terms of his son Uranus conjunction with the true node also in Gemini. All three of them are in Gemini. You don't know with Trump. You know, you just don't know what he's capable of. He could be, he could be the liberator. You know, he could be that guy, you know, with his Mars running through Washington astrocartographically that takes on the system. He might do that. There's a bunch of coyotes hang, um, howling in the background. Can you hear them? They're just going for it. Listen to that. What other broadcasts do you get howling coyotes? They're, they're, they're chiming in with me here. Uh, so and then they stop. Thank you. I'm just on cue. Um, he could be that, but he could also be Mussolini. It, it, he could be the new right, could be the new paradigm for the new world order. I'm not discounting that. We just don't know how this thing is going to go down. But the people that he's hiring, the people that are around him, are classic insiders. Listen to that. They're just going for it out there tonight. Classic insiders. He just hired James Woolsey, by the way, former head of the CIA under Bill Clinton. Maybe he's there to get, maybe he's hired Woolsey uh, to get inside info. But Woolsey, a died in the Woolsey insider as it comes to the CIA. And Trump's wanting to create his own version of the CIA, apparently. He doesn't like our intelligence, but we know he likes information. That much is clear. So here we are. Let's check out what else is going on. we got the moon in Aries right now. It's at 29 degrees tomorrow. It goes into Taurus. Lovely Taurus. Ah, the moon in Taurus. What a great moon. Uh, but in uh, two days, it will be trying to sun with a, a moon sun trying in roughly 48 hours as it begins to phase out of Taurus. But it'll be at the end of Taurus trining the sun in Virgo. Uh, we've got Mercury going retrograde. Of course, we know that that goes uh, to the 22nd, 23rd. It finally moves forward. And we've got about two weeks of the shadow Mercury retrograde. We've got another week here. We're going backwards. And it's been interesting looking at uh, Mercury retrograde in my chart, my life, I'm looking at my work, how I'm doing it, where it's working, where it's not working, things I need to change. I went out and bought a brand new uh, mic system. And, and I'm looking at doing something very different next week. I'm exploring the possibility here of doing my show live streaming video on YouTube. Okay, so that would be a major change in my programming on Sunday nights, maybe even beyond Sunday night. We, we might be looking at the, the last few shows here on Blog Talk Radio. I might just transition right over to YouTube and video every single day when I'm doing the 15 minutes of flame. And, of course, the uh, Friday show and the Sunday night show. So that's part of a new change that's coming, and um, that will coincide with Libra and will also coincide with Mercury going direct. Uh, we've got Venus in Libra at 24 degrees, and uh, that's going to be moving into Scorpio by week's end. And Venus in Scorpio is a very different energy than Venus in Libra. I love Venus in Libra. I've got Venus in Libra. It's been great. Great time. Love it. It's been uh, harmonious. In fact, it was so funny today. I was coaching baseball, and I was at third base, and I was coaching against one of my old coaches. And he said, hey, Robert, Robert, 
you're looking really good these days. What is it? What is it? Is it the haircut? I, I thought to myself, well, no, it's probably Venus and Libra. Although I didn't really say that. But I thought to myself, right? So Venus goes into Scorpio. Now's a good time. Create harmony, balance, accord in your relationships. Because once it goes into Scorpio, man, we're going to go deep. And we're going to be pl- plunging into the psyche, Eros and Psyche, as it relates to relationship. And speaking of Eros and Psyche, I'll be up in Canada uh, next weekend, and I'll be doing a, a seminar up there uh, on Libra, Eros and Psyche relationships. And it's going to include yoga. All the uh, details are on my website. Uh, if you're up in Canada, Minnesota, Toronto, the Toronto area, go to my website and check it out. Uh, we've got Mars and Sagittarius at 24 degrees coming up on the galactic center. Mars will be there in four days. It's going to be an interesting time as Mars, uh, Mars conjuncts this very powerful central point of focus in our galaxy where really the mind of God is emanating through the pulsation of neutrinos. And truth becomes incredibly important. And where does Mars go after that? It goes into Capricorn. It's an, it's an interesting place for Mars. Not after this week, but the next station for Mars. Mars and Capricorn, and we're dealing with, of course, the Capricornian energies of the plutocracy. And Mars will conjunct uh, Pluto in Capricorn a few weeks out. That's going to be a major time, by the way. Significant, because we're also going to be dealing with a Mars... Uh, Uranus square, the energies for Mars on election night are off the hook, 29 degrees Capricorn. And the day after, which is um, 11-9, the inversion of 9-11. So we've had 6-11, right? And 6-11 this year was the Orlando event. 9-11 this year was Hillary. And maybe what we experienced with Hillary was another false flag. How about that? And then on 11-9, again, there's this day after effect from the election with Mars in Aquarius. This is the radicalization, the active radicalization of something new coming down. And uh, it's wild energy right around the election if they are continuing to be uh, promoted and taking place on the 8th of November. Uh, Jupiter's at two degrees, Libra. And we talked a little bit about that. You know, one of the things about Jupiter and Libra that I am looking forward to is more balance in the masculine and the feminine. I would love that. You know, what I don't want, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say this. I'm actually proud to say it. What I don't want is I don't want watered down language and the use of pronouns. It's like the language police are out. They are out in numbers. And they are, you know... It's really fascinating what's taking place because we're seeing this now on college campuses around the country. They're eliminating the use of pronouns because they don't want anyone to feel as though they're being discriminated against. So the whole idea of he and she and man and woman and boy and girl, it is being eradicated. And it's starting on our universities And it's happening in middle America. Keep your eyes on colleges in middle America because there's a strategy here. If you can change the vocabulary and the psychic topography of colleges in middle America, we know it can happen in a place like University of California, Berkeley. We know it could happen in a place like Harvard or UMass or uh, Smith or Vassar. Right. We, those are the East Coast schools. They can happen. But when it happens at a University of Nebraska or Iowa State or Missouri, then we are seeing this proliferation of an agenda which happens in the middle Amer- in middle America. Just keep your eyes on this. This is, you know, I don't want to see this Jupiter kind of expansion in the masculine and the feminine kind of wipe everything out. So we're just eradicated. We're just this mind, I won't call it mindless, but we're colorless, we're odorless, we're sexless. We are so sanitized that nobody ever gets offended at anybody. And if you do, then you become your own persecutor around the entire experience. Or perhaps even worse, 
you will be persecuted in, in, in some other fashion. Now, the real magic around Jupiter and Libra is we can restore balance to the masculine and feminine, where men are cool with being men. Women are okay with being women. And if you're somewhere in between, then maybe, you know, you're cool with that. But this is the nature of Jupiter in Libra. It's the balance that can be achieved. And we've seen this whole thing go out of balance in such a big way. You know, I had a, a Dean Esme from the New Men's Movement on my show about uh, maybe two years ago. And I was interested in what was happening with the new men's movement or the men's movement now, because when I was in my 20s, I was actually part of the men's movement, Robert Bly, uh, uh, who else, uh, Shepard Bliss, uh, Michael Murphy. I mean, these are all the kind of the mytho, the mythopoetic bards. And we, and we got into these sort of the myths of the wounded male and Iron John and the Kingfisher, you know, because there were a whole generation of wounded men. Back then, they still are. But the men are diff- they're wounded in a different kind of way now. They've got they've got feminine wounds versus masculine wounds. The masculine wounds occurred at the hands of fathers who had gone through very trying times. Fathers who'd been raised by depression era parents, and their sons who had been raised in an environment where the father was maybe strong, maybe silent, maybe the worker, maybe he was a closet alcoholic. Uh, you know, the, the, it, was, it was the wounds of the father that would be set upon the son. And there was a whole generation of these guys that were dealing with them, feeling as if they were failures. They had divorces. They had gone through the ravages of the women's liberation movement because they had been convinced that if they had become more feminine, more sensitive, more like women, that women would like them more, that they could bond, that they could have children. They could have a family. They could have a legacy. And what happened was is that the very thing that attracted uh, women to that, to a, ver- to a version of, of, of a man was gone. It was eradicated. And they were actually evolving in a feminine kind of way, which is kind of interesting, right? It's not, it's not completely, um, you know, uh, repulsive that men can embrace their femininity. I do. I've got a son. I, you know, I love him to death. I, I do, you know, I do intuitive work. I work with people all the time. It helps me get in touch with my, with my feminine side, my intuitive side. So it's there. We have to, we have to go there. Masculine and feminine in a lot of ways are, you know, they're, I wouldn't say they're labels, but because now we're into the, into the other camp, but they don't always mean what we think they mean. They don't always manifest the way that we think they manifest. There are different qualities and they're qualities they are qualities. They are not labels. Okay, let's get let's get that straight. But these guys went through, they went through hell because they they decided they were going to move in a different direction, and then they lost their wives, they lost their families. And this is all happening during the seventies, right? Pluto and Libra, Generation X is when you know the, it, it, all the divorce laws got changed. The Catholic Church pinched his nose and looked the other way. No fault divorces. Before, when you wanted to get a divorce, man, you had to. You had to work to get a divorce. You had to show that somebody was really screwing you over. People would hire detectives. This is what happened. And then the no-fault divorce kicked in. Uh, the Catholic Church kicked in, and they basically turned divorce into kind of a drive-through affair. And you, just, you could just basically punch it up, and you were done. Now you had to go through the courts, and then you could get, you know, at that, now the courts kicked in. and said, okay, well, here we go. There's a lot of money for us to be made here. We've got legal fees to process. We can get involved in the middle. You know, we're taking the money. We're taking a percentage of the money because you've got to go through the court system to pay. Unless, of course, you could actually arrange some kind of agreement with another person, with your, with your mates, with your, with your wife or your husband. And how many people can really do that? How many people can really say after they've been married and dragged through the mud and there's, you know, shame and regret and pain and, uh, and, and, and all these other, you know, bands of emotions. Who can sit down and look at each other and say, you would, let's do this for the, for the better of our child. I've got this. You've got this. This is fair. This is fair. Yes, this is fair. It's almost impossible, which is why there's lawyers who prey upon the emotionality of people that have gone through crisis. Now, lawyers play a role, and sometimes they can actually be quite helpful. But here's what happened. You know, you've got these guys that went through all this, and then they were looking for something else. They were trying to get back in touch with their masculinity. 
They were trying to get in touch with their wound and go through their wound and find something creative, something whole from this shadow, from the male that they rejected, from the father they rejected, from the patriarchal rules and and regulations that they had rejected. But there was something in there that they needed to bring back. And it was an interesting time. And it was an interesting evolution for a lot of people. I was kind of young at the time. It was almost like I was too young. There were older men who were really suffering and going through some heavy shit. Some of which actually had, we had to deal with things like um, incest and being violated. I'm one of the guys in my men's group, that's what happened to him. He talked about it. He talked about how his stepfather sexually assaulted him on more than one occasion. It was shocking. And he was around our age. Now, I'll tell you, look, there's no names involved here, but I'll tell you how it manifested in his life. About, uh, let's see, that was around 1988. So let's fast forward around 1993. So about five years later, I ran into him, and he developed a, a crack uh, cocaine problem. And he was a teacher at a school in California, college in California. I wound up getting high with one of his students, and the next thing you know, he lost everything. Everything. And through that period, what happened was is that he realized that his addiction was a way of covering up for the shame that he experienced when he was when he was young. So this is part of the men's movement. People were trying to, you know, move through this stuff. Now the men's movement that's taking place now, hard. It's very hard. It's exploitative. It has very little to do with mythopoesis. Um, it has a lot to do with I'm going to get mine and screw you. Screw you, woman. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a book uh, uh, about how to pick up women. Uh, Neil, was it? Um, not Neil Gaiman, but you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna read these things. We're gonna you know we're gonna have a band of brothers, and we're gonna come together and we're gonna be in the power, power over this group that has decided uh, that um, you know that, that they're gonna have their own kind of brand of morality and their own kind of uh, uh, chemistry, emotional and intuitive chemistry, it was just as screwed up as men. So we have a group of women who have been basically inculcated to have sex whenever they wanted. Sex is liberation. Sex is freedom. And they become more masculine in a lot of ways. You know, and the men become more feminized because now the women are engaged in some other form of social interaction. It's, it's the imbalance. And so now the men come back and they say, okay, we're going to be predatory. You're going to be predatory. You're going to, you're going to do this. We're going to be predatory. So now we have two predatory classes. And what is the psychic shock of all of that? The psychic shock is we're not going to be men and we're not going to be women. We're going to be something else. And maybe we'll flip the script because everything's become so confused and disordered. You know, when I read and hear about children five years of age, four years of age, that are going through sexual reassignments, uh, surgery, procedures, getting hormones, I just, I flip my wig. I, I find it very hard to deal with because I am old school in this regard. And I don't know what it's like to feel like a woman trapped in a man's body. I don't know what it's like to feel like a man trapped in a woman's body. I don't. But I do know that we were assigned these biological earth suits. These I don't want to say units since it's too, too digital. But we were assigned these. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's not always easy. It's not always easy. You know, some people at times in their life are more masculine than others. Some people at times are more feminist. It is not easy. And again, I want to have some compassion for people that have a tough time, but I'm old school when it comes to this. It's just the way it is. When I see sexual reassignment surgery or, uh, you know, hormones being given to kids, I just, I, I just have a very difficult time. So difficult. So Jupiter and Libra, hopefully we can come back into some balance it's placing a lot of pressure on a, on a on an aspect for a year. I mean, let's be clear about this. Jupiter's in Libra for a year. But I think we can begin to approach this. So we need to have a dialogue 
about what it's like to be a man, what it's like to be a woman. What is it? And how can we how can we bring these things closer together without completely eradicating the vocabulary that exists in order to do that? That's not the solution. It's just not the solution. Life is not easy in that regard. It may seem easy that all we have to do is change the rules of language, and all of a sudden we're singing kumbaya. No, it's not quite like that. There's another set of problems that arise. You want to see what happens when that takes place? Watch a movie called THX 1138, George Lucas's first movie, and you'll see exactly what happens. It's stark. There's no color. There's no verve. There's absolutely uh, no sense of eros or psyche. And what's really interesting is we are dealing with two very extreme versions of gender neutrality and non-gender neutrality. On the one hand, we're being forced into the elimination of pronouns which cause microaggressions, which is ridiculous. And on the other hand, there is a new wave of male-female relationships and dynamics that are coming to this country, certainly coming to Europe, and that is the deeply patriarchal and almost brutal relationships that take place inside the Wahhabist and Salafist versions of Islam. It doesn't get any more extreme than that. So on the one hand, we've got this this new energy, which is almost like the shadow, right? I mean, so we're repressing. We're repressing on a social and collective level the beauty of masculinity, the beauty of femininity, and the and the difference, the inherent difference between the two. And what we're trying to do is we're we're just trying to napalm the whole thing. And meanwhile, here's this other culture coming in, which is the exact opposite which is clearly defined between masculine and feminine roles. In fact, so extreme that, it, that it's almost shocking and so to, to really kind of wrap your head around it. I mean, when you go to a, a supermarket like I did a couple months back at about midnight, and there's a woman there, and, she, and she's dressed in some kind of a black canopy, not even a burqa, but a black canopy with a veil at about midnight. I mean, it's just, it's just utterly – look, it, I, I'm not an Islamophobe. This country, you can practice any religion you want. I mean, clearly, that's the case. But what I'm trying to share with you is, is because we become so out of balance and so out of whack that we have these two extremes that are emerging, and they are not healthy extremes, either one. And so Jupiter and Libra has the potentiality – to bring some balance into this. But I tell you what, man, if we want balance and we got to talk about it, maybe, maybe there's a professional athlete out there that will sit down in front of the American flag because he really feels like, you know, as a male that he needs to have this whole concept of masculinity redressed and the relationship between the two sexes redressed. We got to talk about it. We've got to move the discussion forward. Do you think that's going to be noteworthy? No, of course not. It doesn't grab headlines. There's no special interest groups behind it. George Soros doesn't give a rat's ass, and he won't you know, invest $30 million to uplift Jupiter and Libra. But you can do it in your own life. You can do it in your own life. And so as we move towards this point of balance, which we will be moving into next week. You have the potentiality, whether you're male, whether you're female, to ask yourself where you are, how you're doing, and if you'd like to bring more balance into your life. Just figure out where it is. Figure out where it is. I say embrace your sexuality. I say embrace your sex. I say embrace your identity. Live it love it, and let other people resonate with it. And let's bring the fullness back into being the masculine and the feminine. You know, I've run out of time here. I'd like to get into more aspects coming up. We've got Saturn, also 10 degrees, Sagittarius. We've got, we got a bunch of stuff. But 
but we've had a top loaded show with Jolie in the first hour. And I kind of got off on a bit of a tangent here in the second hour. Uh, I'll be back uh, tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow to do a little 15 minutes of flame. So until then, use your head to discern what's real, your heart to stay open to what's possible. Um, I'm Robert Phoenix. Love your brothers. Love your sisters. This is the time to do that. Let's bring some balance back to equitability, equanimity in all things related to Libra. Here's Philip K. Dick. We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words, I submit that these impressions are valid and significant, and I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off.